What's up guys? We are gonna take this beautiful controller right here and make it a little bit cooler. I've never really been much of a controller guy, but man, this 20th anniversary controller looks awesome. The fact that it's kind of like a smoked clear color, the dark buttons, it's got the rubber green grips, the uh, green X logo. Looks really good. We are gonna turn that controller into this controller. This one doesn't look as good. I'm just using this as an example. Check that bad boy out. So this is a light kit, which I will give you guys the information here in a second, but I really like this one because not only does it come with, you know, the different buttons and stuff like that, but it feels of the same quality. The sticks are still really good, which a lot of times I would be worried that they're going to send like some cheap plastic sticks or something like that, but these actually feel really good. They still have rubber on the outside. This is not the exact same kit that we will be using for this controller. And uh, this is actually my personal one that I'm keeping. So we're not doing this one either. We are going to do like a brand new unopened one and uh, I'm actually going to put it on eBay and sell it. So like I said, this one comes with all your buttons, uh, the two joysticks, the D-pad, just kind of give you a comparison of what they normally look well they don't normally look like this but normally darker buttons like that i really like this kit because there's two different ways you can install it and both of them are fairly easy the way i do it i would not recommend for a first timer you know with a soldering iron because you do need to be a little bit careful because you can definitely damage the controller the way i wire them up they come on with the controller and as you can see, I did a blue. This kit does not come with a light to modify this. I did that separately. Um, the kit just does what you see here. What You know, the stuff changing colors. So, this way, the lights come on with the controller. And then you press these two buttons right here. And you can change the mode. You've got kind of like a cool flashy kind. And then you've got solid colors. Red green, blue, kind of like a greenish yellow, uh, like a pink purple, kind of more like an aqua blue. Actually, that's an aqua blue. And then the uh, color changing. I like this one. It just kind of slowly fades through each color. Get a little bit better angle here with the light off. So this is very bright and very vivid in person. Um, I'm trying to do the best I can to capture it on camera. It looks awesome, I love it. So there's different kits you can buy. So this is the clear kit. As you can see, all the buttons and joysticks are clear. The buttons do, I can't really tell. The buttons do still have like A, B, X, Y on them. Really hard to tell from the picture right now. But basically this is just to show off the lights the most. Um, the kit that I bought for this controller, because this has darker buttons, just kind of like a darker theme overall, the buttons are actually black, but the cutouts are there for the colors, um, to shine through, like where it says Y, B, A, X, those are clear. The buttons are black, but the lettering is clear, so the color will shine through as the letter. And then same thing with these buttons, um, the D-pad has an outline, and then these are black up top. But down here, they're clear. So you'll still get all the light kind of shining through. And I think it might actually look a little bit cooler. Um, I really went back and forth on what kit to get. But let's get started. So let me bring this to my workbench. Alrighty, so here we go. This is a brand new sealed unit. Kind of hurts me to have to open it. But uh, oh well, got to do what you got to do. I'm actually going to try to apply some heat to it. And see if I can't get that sticker off just to kind of preserve the newness to the guy who buys it. I'm sure they might appreciate it. Obviously, I will disclose that this has been opened. Nope. We're just going to open it. Oh, well. She is gorgeous. 
gorgeous. And also, I've, I'm working on this cardboard piece right here just because my little uh, my rubber mat here is a little bit dirty, and I want to keep this controller as clean as possible. So here is the kit. It is by Extreme Rate. I get these off Amazon for about thirty bucks. But here's what you get with the kit. You get the light board here itself. This is like the little flexible panel that goes in the controller and has lights on it. You get the clear um, rubber button things. I'm not really sure what the heck you call those. But uh, here's your power wire if you are doing the solder installation. If you're doing the battery version, um, you don't need to solder. It comes with a full set of spare screws, which is really cool because I did lose one once. Little, you know, warranty card. And then these are supposed to be neatly packed like this. But this kit is really nice because it comes with everything. Your joysticks, your D-pad, your four buttons, your uh, menu buttons, and the tools to open the controller and do all the work. I love the kit, it's awesome. Um, let me show you what the buttons look like. So they're unfortunately a little bit different. Um, these ones are like really glossy in the controller, whereas these ones are kind of like a matte black, but it's definitely gonna be worth it. I do apologize that it's not focusing, but let's get to work. So what we do first is pop these bumpers off. And uh, this smooth part is what you pop off, not the green stuff here. So I'm going to try to do this really carefully. I'm going to take the battery compartment off too because we don't need that right now. And then these just kind of like takes a bit of force. Quite a bit of force. And I don't want to like mar them up. I feel like no matter what that they're going to break. Even though they don't. They just, they are really stubborn to come off. Ouch. Okay, that one came off a little bit easier. I put all my parts to the side in a spot that you're not going to lose them. So now, unfortunately, we have to void the warranty. And what I do here is I actually heat the sticker up so I can just peel it off and then reinstall it. You can use a hairdryer for this or a heat gun. Or you can literally just stab right through here. You'll see where the screw is. You know, since most of you guys are probably going to be doing this on your own personal controllers. If I was keeping this controller, I'm not, I don't care about the label inside. take a knife and very carefully try to peel an edge up somewhere there we go and this sticker is cool too because you don't get any um, void spots or whatever And I mean, it's definitely going to be obvious that it was peeled up pretty much no matter what because it's such a thin sticker. But when selling it, I would rather have the sticker intact. But like I said, obviously this will be disclosed in the ad that this controller has been opened. So you take the larger of the two. You got one screw right here. And some of these puppies are in there tight. So if you have like one of those like iFixit type kits, um, I definitely recommend those because they're going to have a bigger, um, bigger handle to grip and get a little bit more torque. Got one right here on both sides. And some of these get stubborn. You get them out and they just stick in there because these are not magnetized. Got one down here at the bottom on both sides. 
I believe there's five total in the shell. Yep, you got one, two, three, four, and five. And one cool thing about these controllers is it's not going to, like, spring apart when you open it up. I know a lot of controllers, like, specifically the PS3 controller comes to mind. Like, once you open those things up... Oh, God, I hate that. It's slipping. It's so tight. Once you open those things up, man, I felt like 50 parts sprung out. And they were so hard to get back together. So once you got that out, this top cover lifts right off. Man, look at that. That is nice. See, normally this is black. Obviously, it wouldn't matter because you're not going to see through this, but that really makes it pop. That's cool. I didn't even realize that. So pull our old joysticks off. We're not going to need those. Like I said, keep everything organized, though, because if anything, these kits aren't perfect quality. I've, I've read some reviews where some people got buttons that didn't fit right. You know, they stuck once you started pressing them. So you don't want to just throw this stuff away or lose it as you're going. And then now your back part's going to kind of come off. And now here we go. We're, now we're down to the nitty gritty. So now we take this tool again. And we're going to pop these up. And then this middle part comes off, or it should. I do apologize, it's gonna get a little bit loud. My furnace just kicked on. Now, if you can see right here, hopefully, there's another little tab. Now we gotta get that off. Um, that one, I believe I did this, like this last time, yeah. Might need to use something a little bit smaller for that. And then it just comes right off. Those are your left and right buttons, or the tap triggers, whatever you want to call them. And one thing that I did last time, this sync button right here, it's stuck in the controller right now, but once we pop this board off, this will most likely fall out so take note of how that's oriented all right so now we are going to use the smaller uh bit driver and take out all these screws and also disconnect our little antennas right here remember this one on the right here when you're looking at it like this it goes on the bottom and then this one on the left goes on the top and they just lift off don't force them they just a little bit of pressure and they come right off so now we got a screw over here and all these screws are the same so you have two screws for this whole thing you have five thick ones for the shell and then quite a few of these little ones I don't know what the exact number is and then we got our other one right there Again, these aren't magnetized, which kind of sucks, but also they're cheap. Can't complain. Now, once those are out, this bottom board right here just kind of lifts up. A little bit of force because it is plugged in. And then another thing to note, too, that they did not mention, this uh, microphone jack literally is just sitting there. So I dropped this. I put my last controller completely back together, and I was like, What's missing here? There's a wide open hole. That's what it was. So now, because of the way all these uh, rumble things are connected, this board will not come out. We are just gonna move it out of the way. We've got two more screws right here. got one down here and if you guys get these out a different way than what I'm showing that is perfectly fine we're just trying to get them out sometimes these tweezers are gonna help so you don't lose it or drop it and then we have 
twist this a little bit more. We have one right here. Tweeze that out. And then we have two more down by the rumble strips. I'm gonna say rumble strips. I know that's what they're not called. The rumble motors. I'm thinking of rumble strips like on the highway or on the side of the road. You know what I mean. Take that out. Now all of our screws are out and this board will lift up and out. Now do this gentle because these wires are really thin. Just kind of finagle it out. It's going to get caught on some stuff, but you'll get it out. So this gray part is your old button little thingy. You don't need that. And now, so check out the, this is the sync button. See how that's in there? Keep note of that because I always lose that and then I forget how it goes. So here's your Xbox button just to show you that it does light up green. So unfortunately, any different light under it would not look good. So all these buttons are going to fall out. I just kind of tilt them, let them go crazy because we are replacing all of them except the sync button and the Xbox button. So then we need to get this out and that just, actually I'm just going to use, yep, I just use my fingernail and then just kind of play with it. And there you go, there's your D-pad. So, again, I'm going to move all this stuff to the side that we are not using. We are going to start on the light board. So, a couple things. I am doing the solder insulation because I want the lights to come on and off with the controller. Um, the battery version, there's a sequence of buttons you press to turn them on and then a sequence of buttons you press to turn them off. That would be a cool version, like if you're going to have the shelf like up on a controller and you just kind of want to show it off, have the lights going, that would be the way to go. Um, I am not doing it like that though, I'm using this controller. Well, I'm actually selling this one, but you know what I mean. We are going to take the light board out of the bag and be very careful with this. They are very very thin easy to bend and kink um, so this right here is how you do the battery insulation I don't need that so I'm gonna lift this little thing up right here pop this out I can toss that and then this board just kind of installs like this so in the video they say use this hole right here and then this hole, those are kind of like alignment holes. You don't need to do nothing with the screwdriver, it's just sticking it in there. But uh, basically just make sure those two holes are lined up and then stick it on. So I am going to pre-solder this though. And it comes with a wire, there's two wires on here. They do need to be split. both ends because both uh, positive and negative solder points are pretty far away from each other so the wire if you don't split it all the way you can tell the difference because they're one of the wires has a white line on it hopefully you guys can see that so that white line I use that as the negative and then if you look down here right here you can see battery negative and battery positive
that's all we are using. Got my soldering iron. I'm gonna pre-tin the pad. And then on the back of the controller here is where we will be soldering for power. Okay, so this little point right here is going to be your negative. This is really easy to solder onto. Just add a little bit of solder to that and then get your wire on. And then this chip right here, C33, you are going to solder onto the right side of that. I'm trying to show it as best as I can in the video here. Very easy to solder onto as well. It's very large, a lot of surface area. Heat it up, add some solder to it, and then heat it up again, put your wire on. Now it is small. I do recommend a fine point soldering tip like this. Um, this isn't anything special. This is just an Amazon soldering iron with a thin tip. I do use the magnifying glass here. But you really need to be careful because you do not want any solder balls or anything shorting out any of these gaps. So I'm going to solder on this first. Again, we are using the wire here. I use tweezers. Um, it helps tremendously. For the negative, I am using the wire that has the white line on it. angle to get to here even with angled players or tweezers not my best work that's for sure It's all connected. I'm actually going to install it first here. Peel your sticky stuff off. Just this big piece for now. And then like I said, we are going to line up these two alignment holes. And it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but the straighter the better for sure. It's a little bit harder doing it on camera where I'm not directly above it to see these holes. That's good enough. Now it's a little bit cold in my house, so I'm gonna add some heat to this. This is completely unnecessary, but um, if you're doing this insulation and it's winter time, this won't hurt anything, it'll just make it adhere a little bit better. Also, I'm doing this on a brand new controller, so there's no dust, there's no corrosion, there's no damage of any sorts. If you're doing this on a controller that you've been using for a minute, I mean, if, if it's more than a week or two old, chances are there could be some dust and stuff in it. Um, get yourself a little cheap toothbrush, just wipe it off first. You can use some uh, isopropyl alcohol. Um, I get 99% on Amazon for dirt cheap. Um, you can go to Kroger and get probably like 70 something percent. That'll be just fine. Just let it dry for a little bit longer. 99% dries like nearly instantly. Um, the less percentage will take 10, 20 extra seconds. So make sure that's stuck on everywhere. 
you have like an air bubble or something in it, it's going to be perfectly fine. It's not going to hurt anything. And now we are going to... So our negative one is going to be this top wire and our positive will be the other one. And if you have like a little bit of adhesive or something, some sort of tape to hold this board down, this is going to be so much easier because this thing is just wanting to slide everywhere. Anything will work. I just want something to hold it a little bit steady because you're kind of like fighting all these other connections at the same time. This one is going to go, so we're going to open that up a little bit more. This one's going to go, we're going to tie this wire out of the way. Let it cool for a second so the solder hardens up. Solder, solder, whatever the heck you call it. Take this dirty tape off. So now we are gonna go back here, start putting our buttons in. Hey you guys, remind me not to forget that one. The Xbox button in. The cool thing about these is they only go in one way. There's like these little alignment tabs on them. Like me, I always forget which one's which. So hopefully you can see that like once you get it the right way, it's just going to kind of fall in. And then we got the Y button. Then we got the share button. Menu. Actually, that goes in the other side. Sync button. I'm going to put this on here because I believe it will be a little bit easier. Now, also, when you're doing this, um, for me, it's personally easier to pick it up while I'm putting this stuff in there because otherwise it pushes on the buttons. And stuff doesn't line up right. So hold your finger on this, push it, make sure all your buttons work. All these do. Of course, the B button is weird because it uses the other board. But now that we have our buttons in, we're going to put the two just one or two of the screws back in here just to hold it on. Otherwise it's gonna to wanna to come apart. And then all your buttons come out. Actually, we are going to, let's see. So now this is another tricky part right here. This board right here gets stuck to this outer board. 
So you gotta kind of do some finessing to get that to work. So I'm gonna start off by peeling the tape off. There we go. Of course it didn't all come off. Okay, so basically on this, you just need your B button right here, which is this one. That needs to touch this pad cleanly. So you need to line this hole up right here around this. So I'm gonna do my best to try that. It is tricky, it does suck. I haven't really found an easy way. But once you kind of get it, that's good right there. So I'm gonna just push down on the rest of it. Again, be gentle because these wires that you're working around are very, very thin. Okay, so now pull your antenna wires back up if they fell, because they always do. And then I'm going to go ahead and throw my headphone jack back in. So if you're holding a controller like this where the triggers are facing up, like this is the bottom of the controller these connections you can see in this are different these connections go on the top well they face the top when you're holding the controller like this and then what you're also going to need to do is make sure that your wires don't interfere with your joysticks and then you see there's a connection right there, that little gray connector. And then see what I mean, that, that thing falls out so easy. That little connector right there, that goes in, well this goes into that. So basically what you're doing is just getting that to line up, making sure nothing's in the way, Make sure your board's straight, and then it's just going to kind of push back in with a little bit of resistance, but not much. If you're pushing and it is not budging, make sure your wires are out of the way. So now what I'm going to do is actually pop the back of this on. Um, not worried about the antenna wires. I'm just going to go like this. Now we are going to test it. So get yourself some batteries. I highly recommend these double A's. I get these on Amazon. They come in a pack of like eight or ten with a charger. They are rechargeable. Love these things. So we're going to throw them in. And then, yep, lights work. So if you just quickly tap this button, the uh, Xbox button, your lights will come on and then they will shut off pretty quick, but we're going to go through the different colors. There we go. This is going to look pretty sick. So these definitely, it's a whole different vibe versus, uh, you can actually hold it, it's no big deal. Oh, that does light up white. I thought just the X would light up, no kidding. So I guess we could technically, I mean, you could technically change this color. Um, hmm, I don't know if I want to though. 
because like I said when you change that color if that's not white or green that X really isn't I mean the I guess the X doesn't really light up anyways it just kind of blocks the light and looks cool I don't know I'll, I'll figure that out but uh here's what it looks like so you just want to right now you're just testing it make sure everything works you know feel your buttons make sure you like the feel everything feels good there's no resistance there's nothing sticking I haven't ran into that issue luckily so couldn't really tell you what to do besides maybe try like lightly sanding it or filing it but uh the kits I've used have been phenomenal so now that we know the lights work we're gonna take the batteries out pop that back off and now we're gonna pop this board back off because I have to put that um, headphone jack in and also before that we're gonna put all the screws in now so there are three more screws that go on that bottom board I think maybe even four and they're a little harder to get to um, once you've got the lights installed because it's more wires that are tying it up so I'm gonna put the two screws in down here And you don't gotta crank these, just get them nice and snug. And then we have one more over by the B button. Man, that one's gonna be tricky to get to. It's right down there, wait, nope, it's right here. And how the heck am I gonna get to that? Okay, I'll be able to do that. Tweezers are almost a necessity for this, I mean, I also have fat hands, so that doesn't help. Get that in there. And just kind of go at it at a little bit of an angle, but we're not cranking it down, so no big deal. And then we have the one middle one. And as much as I'd like to be like, you know, if you can't get one of them in, it's no big deal. Um, I can't confirm or deny that. I would say I recommend doing your best to get those all in because you are pushing on all this. So all those screws are going to be holding that board up here. Like you don't want to be pushing on the button and also like pushing the board down. That would just, that would suck. So now I'm going to put this headphone jack in. And you guys know what that connector looks like, so I don't have to show you. And then, boom. Make sure this wire's out of the way. Make sure we got our sync button. God, make sure you got that. So I believe this one was on top. These are a little tricky to get back installed. I get the little connector lined up where it's supposed to go and then I use my finger because you don't want to really force them. Um, they'll just kind of, you can hear that little snap. Okay, and then these wires, I don't know how necessary it is, but they do tuck into these little cavities right here, or these little voids. So now we are going to apply these. Take the sticker off of those. And I will share a little tip here in a second. Um, to get these to line up, I actually use my tweezers because this little ribbon right here is too long. So it wants to push it like farther out than it should be. Um, basically, you're just kind of following the curve, like this open circle in here where this metal is. Just kind of get it lined up with that as best you can. Um, it does not need to be perfect, but 
do the best you can, and I'll show you why here in a second. Once you get it on, whoops, see, that's how easy these boards pop out. <laughs> Should have put the screws in first. Okay, headphone jack. Pop this back in. And then I'm going to put the screws in. So let's do that. This one's simple. It's only got the two screws. I just hate putting screws in because I always feel like, ah, you know, what if I forgot something or something like that? Hey, take the screws right back out. It's no big deal. So again, just snug. And now... We're gonna do these. And the reason I say you wanna get them lined up as best you can is because the first time I installed these, I was like, okay, cool. And then I was like, wait, it hits. I was like, this totally interferes. The, uh, the joystick does not move that much once you have the controller put back together. So that is okay. But if you have this too far, um, it definitely can interfere, so. You want to try your best to line it up as best you can. Um, worst case scenario, you got to pop it back off and, you know, just adjust them a little bit. I haven't had to do that. Um, it was just my first installation. I was like, hey, what the heck? This is, you know, making the joystick stick, but I didn't have the joystick on yet. So just stick it on as best you can. And then again, I'm gonna apply just a little bit of heat. This, this is unnecessary, this is just me going a little bit further. It's winter here, I'm in Michigan. Both the controller and this light kit were sitting outside when I got home from work, you know, so they're a little bit cold. Like I said, if you wanna do this too, a um, a hair dryer would be more than enough, but give it one more good push. See, they're lined up pretty good. And now we are going to install the D pad. And again, these only go one way. Which is like, is it this? Yep. Mine goes like that. And then the easiest way i found is to clip this back part on down here and then push this piece down. Make sure it's snapped in. There we go. So that's what it looks like when it's snapped in. Uh, mine wasn't going far down. It was snapped in, but it wasn't going far down enough. So take your tweezers, just kind of push that bottom piece in a little bit, and it'll snap in the rest of the way. Click your buttons, make sure it actually works. And basically you're done. Now you just put everything back together. So now we are going to reinstall the bumpers, the bumper buttons, whatever the heck you want to call them. They just kind of snap in. Um, I do push the triggers down and it kind of helps it. And then we're gonna put this cover back on. Press your buttons as you go, make sure everything works. Triggers work. Bumpers work, no sticking. Sync button works. And now, now it's time for all this. So make sure your battery terminals come through there. And then you're just gonna kind of set it all in place. It's a little bit tricky to get back together, but it's not bad.
before you put your faceplate on, I always forget this. Put your new joysticks on. They only go one way. There's like a little notch in them. Slide them on, press them till they click. Now you can put your faceplate on. Now again, give all your buttons a quick test. The Xbox button's gonna be pretty flush with this. And now we're ready to screw everything back together. So I put all the screws in with the tweezers and then just go to town, tighten them all up. You can do them one by one. I personally like to start with this middle one though. That way everything is just kind of evenly held together as you do the other ones. No real rhyme or reason. Um, there's no right or wrong way. But I also get them a little bit snug and then I go to the next one. Almost like if you're putting a uh, wheel back on a car, you kind of go in like a cross pattern. Basically, I just do that to watch everything while I'm putting it back together, make sure nothing's stripping out or, you know, popped out of place or anything like that. All right, screws are back in. Let's power this bad boy up. Cool. Okay, let's put it back together. Let's put the grips on. So to reinstall these, you're just gonna kind of, I mean, essentially just line them up and then squeeze. There we go. They are tricky little buggers to put on. These 20th anniversary controllers, I don't know if they're built a little bit better but they are always a little bit more tricky. Um, my standard controller, the first one I showed you guys, was super smooth. Man, this looks good. So give all your buttons a once over. Triggers work, buttons work, sync button works. You see there's zero issues with these sticking. D-pad works. All the buttons work. Let's check this bad boy out in the dark. Oh, I almost forgot one thing. We gotta put that sticker back in. Let's take the batteries out. Make sure this area is clean. We are going to attempt our best at lining it back up. go that's dang near perfect I'll throw a little bit of heat on it of course Man, this thing looks slick. I didn't know how I was going to feel at first about the buttons because all my buttons are just straight up clear. This gives it a whole new sleek look. I love it. And then you hit these two buttons right here and change the modes. Solid red. Solid green, solid blue, kind of like a yellow green.
purplish pink. Kind of a little bit more purple. Aqua blue. Pink. Oh, this is the color changing. This is my favorite because it's really subtle and you get to see all the colors. Um, this one might actually really look cool with just green. And I say that because of the green bumpers here and, you know, the just the green 20th anniversary theme. That looks sick. So, um, if this guy's, if this video helped you guys out at all, you guys don't even understand how much a thumbs up helps me. Um, share the video around to your friends if you want. Definitely appreciate that. Throw it up on your Facebook or something too. I will link this kit in the description below. I will link the batteries in the description below. Um, not sponsored by them or anything. I just love, love them. They're cheap and they're rechargeable. Like, can't beat that. 